Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're going to do another video here on solubility. But before I get started, I'm going to do a little advertisement here. And that is, if you donate to my website, you might be able to get yourself a cool t-shirt. Check out that. And the back of that cool t-shirt has my website on it. Check it out. Um, or you might even be able to get yourself a cool sticker. Check that out. My son designed the logo for both the sticker and the t-shirt that's on my website. Boom! Okay, so let's get moving on this video here on solubility. Bam! So today we are talking about solubility example number eight. Selective precipitation of toxic ions from well water for future consumption is an excellent applied example of solubility. Unpurified well water that I made up here contains 0.015 molar ferrous, that is iron 2 plus ions, 0.012 molar mercury 2 ions, and 0.021 molar silver ions. Of these ions, mercury is the most toxic for humans, silver is the next, and iron ion is the least toxic. Therefore, selective removal um, and that is precipitation of these ions is critical in making the well water potable for human consumption. With the addition of sodium sulfide, all of these ions can be precipitated. However, since this is costly, what is the minimum concentration of sodium sulfide necessary to selectively precipitate out only the mercury? Sodium sulfide will be added as a solid. And as such, that volume increase with the addition of the solid of sodium sulfide is insignificant, so we do not need to add that into our calculations. What we can get from the back of your textbook in the appendix or the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, the CRC, is the following KSP values for iron sulfide at 6.0 times 10 to the negative 19, for silver sulfide, 6.0 times 10 to the negative 51, for mercury 2 sulfide, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 54. Knowing that sodium sulfide is a salt and dissociates 100% in solution, this yields the following. So sodium sulfide, sodium is a group one, sulfide is underneath oxygen, so sodium has a one plus charge, sulfide has a two minus charge. Therefore, that's why the formula Na2S. It is a salt which dissociates 100%, and I get two sodium ions and one sulfide ion for every one sodium sulfate, so, sorry, sodium sulfide uh, molecule. So using the solubility product constants, now we're going to determine the sulfide ion concentration for each precipitation reaction. Okay, so for the ferrous sulfide, I got ferrous sulfide yielding ferrous ions, sulfide ions. That will give me a KSP that we already aforementioned, and that is products over reactants, stoichiometric coefficients as exponents to determine that KSP equation. So the KSP is equal to 6.0 times 10 to the negative 19. That's the product of the ferrous ion and the sulfide ion. Okay, I'm going to plug in the iron ion concentration that I have in my well water and solve for the sulfide ion concentration. That would be right here at 4.0 times 10 to the negative 17 molar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing here for the silver sulfide. The silver sulfide is, silver is a 1 plus charge, sulfide is that same 2 minus charge that we had before, so the formula for silver sulfide is Ag2S, and that Going, and that is going to yield on the product side two silver ions and one sulfide ion. That gives me a KSP of 6.0 times 10 to the negative 51, but this KSP equation is silver ion concentration squared times the sulfide ion concentration. So I'm going to plug in my silver ion concentration, that's 0 0.2, sorry, 0 0.021, square that, and solve for the sulfide ion concentration, which would be right here at 1.4 times 10 to the negative 47 molar. All right, got that one. One more to do, and that is the mercury 2 sulfide. And I get a mercury 2 plus ion and a sulfide ion. That's a one-to-one -one ratio there of those two ions. 
Okay, it gives me this KSP, that is mercury 2 plus and a sulfide 2 minus. 4.0 times 10 to the negative 54 is the KSP. I have the mercury ion concentration of 0 0.02, sorry, 0 0.012. And I'm gonna solve for the sulfide ion concentration. So the sulfide ion concentration is 3.3 times 10 to the negative 52 molar. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all the sulfide ion concentrations that we have. Okay, so the iron 2 sulfide is the most soluble. That's why that value is the greatest value. Okay, and the mercury 2 sulfide is the least value. That's why it is the smallest value. Okay, to precipitate the mercury 2 plus ions selectively, i.e. only the mercury ions and none other, then the sulfide ion concentration must be greater than the 3.3 times 10 to the negative 52, but less than the 1.4 times 10 to the negative 47. So where am I getting these values from? Well, that's the 3.3 times 10 to the negative 52. It needs to be greater than that in order to start precipitation, but yet less than this value because I want to selectively precipitate only the mercury 2 plus ion and not the silver and not the iron. All right. If all the mercury 2 plus ions are removed, as in the above example, and only the iron 2 plus ions and silver ions remain, what would be the concentration of the sulfide necessary to precip precipitate and therefore remove only the silver and not the iron ions? Again, this is a very costly procedure, so we want to make sure that we maximized our cost ratio benefit here. So, to precipitate the silver ions selectively, i.e. only the silver ions and not the iron in this case, then the sulfide ion concentration must be greater than the 1.4 times 10 to the negative 47, and that is where this value is coming from, and less than the 4.0 times 10 to the negative 17. That's where that value is coming from. Hopefully that will enable us to figure out that we can selectively precipitate certain ions. Okay, it's mostly these transition metal cations that are very toxic to humans and we want to remove these from solution. There are certain ions that we let and stay and keep in the um, water that we use for potable water, like calcium ions, for example. Even though they might not be great for the pipes, calcium ions are okay to consume for humans, of course, within a limited amount. I am the Crazy Hat Chemist, and I got a special hat for her for you today. This um, is in honor of my eldest son because he loves sports and he loves basketball. If he could only be uh, a little bit taller, he would probably be a basketball star. So if you like that video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please donate to my YouTube channel. I will see you next time for more cool chemistry videos. Bye for now.